Hello, everyone. Welcome to 360 Degrees Excellence, where we believe everyone can have a run success. Happy New Year. Uh, I want to wish you a wonderful year ahead, a prosperous one, a happy one. Uh, I pray that it's going to be a very successful year for you and your family. Uh, today, I'm going to be having a conversation with my friend, Dr. Larry De Ojomo. We've known each other for, for several years, and I'm so happy to be having a conversation with him. We're going to be talking about uh, what he likes talking about. He likes talking about self-reflection. We're also going to be talking about good plan. And um, we're also going to be talking about um, mental health and building resilience. We need to build resilience for 2023. But before we dig in into all those topics that I mentioned, it's important that uh, you know my guest. So without uh, further ado, I just want, uh, Doc, can you just tell my guest about yourself? Oh, thanks for having me. It's great to be here, Chelsea. Just call me Larry Day or Larry for short. <laughs> That's what uh, my wife and my daughter and my son calls me. I, I'm going to say a bit of a, a story so that helps the audience know who I am. So in the last year, I've been spending more time with my kids. Obviously, <laughs> I have to learn it the hard way to reflection. So very recently, during the Christmas period, so my, my, myself and my daughter we tried this interesting conversation in the car. It's a quite of a mindful moment. In. Not, nothing is playing, it's quite still sometimes classical music, or sometimes we're just playing some podcast. So you told me about their Christmas uh, games they're doing in school. And the plan is to give uh, a gift to another uh, PS of, of hers. So she had this list, and then she told me that you have to take me to one of the best book bookstore in in Calgary. And she's an avid reader, like my son as well. So I politely agreed to her request, and we went and she bought some couple of good quality books <laughs> for our friends. And in my mind, I was thinking, oh my God, this girl's gonna learn the hard way. That you, you, you don't just, it's good to add value to people, but you don't give everything to people you have to. So I reminded myself, I told her, the rule of one thought I learned from a mentor. When you hand, you keep one thought for yourself. One thought uh, you give to charities, to others in God, and one thought you spend on yourself. But then she just, you know, she challenged my assumptions like she usually do. To cut the story short, okay. I think around Christmas or post-Christmas period, she got a, a gift. It was a book she wasn't expecting. Not good quality. She was quite upset. So I had to help her with her emotion to understand that when you give, you give without, when you give your advice to people, without expecting anything back. It was a bit challenging for her, but she got a concept. Fast forward, just yesterday, I got to a school to pick her up, and she was beaming with smile. I said, oh, I'm there, what's, there? What, what's, up? what's going on? How are you feeling? That's my question. And she said, oh, you know, my friend Highland, one of her best friends, got her some good candles <laughs> from one of the best, you know, stores in, in Canada, in Calgary. And I learned a lesson that from our that we shouldn't try to use our own assumptions, our condition, you know, our past experiences, our art and whatever in our own life to condition our own children. We should try to allow them to experiment. So she got some lovely candles. I mean, I think four or six of them. At the end of the day, she, I asked her if she could give me one, but she says, I didn't know. This is my extreme self-care. And she reminded me my own candles, my lovely wife bought for me a thing during my birthday. And I think I've, I've got my candle here. So that's my candle here now. So it reminds me the life we carry. So it also helps me to switch to a moment of mindfulness rather than being distracted. We live in an age where <laughs> We're constantly uh, distracted, and it's very hard for anyone to be in the moment. 
Yep, that probably summarizes who I am. So just to summarize what I've just said. So I'm a, I'm a father of two active kids <laughs> and I'm married to a lovely woman. Of course, most of your audience, they don't know what I do, but I, I'm a physician who specializes in well-being, um, longevity, resilience, and human, human performance. So this is on the background of the fact that I've been a psychiatrist and a doctor for many years. Interesting. Uh, I like that story that you shared. Uh, I know you like talking about your kids. You're a great father. Very interesting. And I also know you to be a physician, like you said, and um, you also like talking about leadership. You are trained, uh, I think, by um, Joe Maswell uh, to be a leader. And I know that you read a lot. Very interesting. And you recently started a blog, your websites. I've read some of those articles, very, very interesting. You like the way you share stories, very amazing. I am hoping that very soon you are gonna be writing your books. Um, keep it up, my friend. So let's, well, let's I, really I'm, go I'm, to- I'm overwhelmed by, by your comments. <laughs> I feel like I should go to bed right now. Uh, thanks for all your kind words, Tosi. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so today we just want to talk about self-reflection, yeah. And uh, you've also talked about mindfulness, that I'm sure there's a kind of a relationship between that. So uh, I, want, I want you to tell us about how uh, self-reflection is important for continuing improvement and how can we build or develop this vital skill I think that's a very interesting question. I don't think I'm, I'm, I'll be able to do it justice to that question, but hopefully as I'm speaking from my own experience, I'm sure our audience will learn one or two things really. Um, so first and foremost, like John said, in his 15 laws of invaluability, John is a great mentor of mine. He said that it's very hard for you to to be a great human being if you don't know who you are in terms of character. And he also said that you, you can't improve your skills or you can't improve your career if you don't improve your skills. And the last thing he said, which is very important to me is about your spirituality, which uh, a lot of people don't talk about these days because of uh, political correctness. So that brings me to, I think you, you asked about self-reflection, but I think self-reflection is just a, a part of the 15 laws of invaluable growth. I'm sure, I mean, I've read other books, I mean, some great mentors like uh, Carl Dweck, you know, Professor in Stanford. I've read a book in, in my um, uh, mindset. That's a great book if people want to have a look at that. Awesome. Also, James Clare is one of also a mentor who has probably mentored me uh, about atomic habits. I'm, I'm always, other book just close by. So every sort of weekend or monthly, I have a look at that, but these are great books. But like, again, there are so many other books out there people can read. But we know that a lot of people read a lot of books, but they don't slow down to reflect. So that brings me to the 15 laws of invaluable growth. Again, I'm mindful of the fact that we're doing a, a quite short uh, interview. Currently, I'm running the 15 laws of uh, invaluable growth of about four to 66 weeks where people can, if you, if you want to take a deep dive, I mean, if that's what they really want to do this year, to take their year to a different level, they can have a look. I'm sure we put our, that link in, in the show notes, Tosin, remind me so that people can have mm -hmm. a look at that link. So to summarize the 15 laws of growth, I think what it means to me, again, I think who am I to, <laughs> to put a spin on, on John Maxwell, the great, you know, on, on, on his content. But I can summarize the 15 laws of invaluable growth in one word. I think it's just having a, a beginner mindset. That's what it all it means. And to have a beginner's mindset is very hard without you being in the moment. So for example, I'm just gonna go through the law. So one of my favorite law, the law of intentionality. If you don't know yourself, you can know, you have to know your strength, your weaknesses before, 
you can know, you know where to address. Okay. So for me, I knew I need to spend more time with my kids. So I've been like, like an absent father for, for a few years. So I need to address those. So I, I need to, I, I knew my weakness. So the other thing is the law of curiosity. We'll probably come back to that, asking questions. You probably know I send a lot of <laughs> questions to you most days. Some people don't like it, but if you're curious like me, you probably enjoy doing that. And the other one is the law of expansion and contributions. Maybe we'll talk about that and the law of environment. They're very, very important to me. I think all the laws are sweet. But let's focus on the law of reflection that we're talking about today. It's interesting that despite the fact that you know, I've been, I was educated at one of the best schools in this sub-Saharan Africa, uh, nobody taught me reflection. Even I was schooled in, in one of the best schools in Europe, the Maudsley, nobody taught me what reflection really is, to be honest, until I joined the young Maxwell team. So, in a simple word, reflection is just you slowing down, pausing, and gleaning from your experiences, both the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I could explain to people how I do my reflection. So John does, I mean, John does his reflection differently. And I'm still learning from John and all other top leaders out there. So John would say a day or two after Christmas, it blocks that two or three days off. I think maybe a day or two. And it goes to a quiet place without distraction. And now it will go to all his calendar for the last, for example, for the last year, 2022. He will review all the meetings. I, I'm not John. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't even do that. So John would do that. He would go to all the meetings. He will review, reflect, evaluate, look at the meetings that he doesn't need to attend. Some meetings are useless, to be honest, and some are really good. So you have to review those meetings. So what did I learn? What, what, what am I going to do differently? For me, I'm, I'm sure our audience will be wondering, how do I do my, I, I'm not like John. But I do it all differently. So it's from other mentor I got something similar. So I've tweaked it over the years, but I call myself my copy now. I call it my, you know, we'll, we'll put this uh, my website in the show notes, or people can go to my website to get a copy. So in my awareness egg, it's a daily action plan for me. So I've got my big rocks, my small rocks, people I need to contact today, then I've got the bucket of life. So under the bucket of life. I've got my spirituality, my fitness, my finances, my relationships, including family and significant others, community as well. And of course, <laughs> community work and also fun and relaxation. So this six time in place asked me to capture everything in a day. So for example, after like every, I try to reflect it at the end of the day, but it's always very difficult for <laughs> busy people like us. I've got two young kids, I'm married, I've got all the things to do. So sometimes it's hard for me to reflect on those things. So but by, the, by the weekend on a Sabbath day, I would have a look at that and look at, okay, what did I enjoy? What did I learn? What am I gonna do differently? And I'll, I'll write in my journal. And at times I follow the wider like most people, I don't get to do uh, the reflection over the weekend. But what I tend to do is to schedule that appointment with myself at least at the end of the month. So for example, I schedule a time at the end of this month, I'm gonna go away <laughs> just for a day, <laughs> away from the distraction of life and go on and And I do it quarterly, mid-yearly. So by the end of the year, I have a system in place where <laughs> I'm able to glean from my bad and good experiences, so to speak. I, I was speaking to somebody the other day, it was a, a mentee of mine who was saying, oh, Ah, oh, Doc, how do I do that when I couldn't even remember what, <laughs> what I learned in the last two weeks? And I said, that's why you have to have a system in place. Even if you have a photographic memory, I think it, it would be great for you to have a system in place where you can capture those thoughts. So by the end of the year, you have tons of data about yourself, <laughs> about your people around you, about the meetings you attended, about the events you attended, and also about places you visited and the people you shared those experiences. So you have, imagine you have like 366 
This year is a leap year, I'm not sure, I'll double check. But you have at least it's two six to five content for you to, to review. Mm -hmm. Powerful, yeah. I, you know, I like the way you really describe the meaning of self-reflection, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we really need to look back and look at um, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, the mistakes you made, the successes, and um, you want to improve on the success you made. Uh, you mm -hmm. don't want to repeat the, the, the mistake you made. You don't want to repeat the same mm. mistake that you made. And you want to keep on improving yourself. Uh, which is very, very important. And I also like the fact that you, you know, you you show something, a place where you write things down. It's very, very important for us. It, it makes us to be intentional. We, we're able to mm. write things down. Yeah, yeah, I really, I really appreciate uh, that fact. And, you know, because of our time, I, um, I, can you briefly talk to us about growth plan? I mean, what is it? And how can we create one? Awesome question, interesting question. So you cannot have a growth plan until you are you you have an awareness of what your strengths and your weaknesses. And that's why I spent the last minute or so to really explain to people how to capture that. So once you've so imagine a plane flying from, from Calgary to I think you're in, in Minnesota, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. So the first thing a plane has to do is to, again, I'm not an expert in the field. I know some other people <laughs> will be thinking, well, what's this guy talking about? But you first have to geographically look at where you are, and that's an awareness. Then you have to now project you're going to Minnesota. And if you don't want to go to Minnesota, that is if you want to go to uh, New York, that's a good plan. Then you have to make adjustments where you want to go. So that leads me to what, what, what do you mean by good plan? So for example, in my own life, so one of the things I want to do more is to spend more time with my kids. So, so I, like today, we, we, we got to school. I drove my daughter around seven, about seven fifty-five. Yesterday was seven fifty. So the the go, the the growth or goal plan today is to get her to school seven forty-five, so she can have time to settle down, do her mindfulness, and then get ready for school at eight. But in the last years, been like you know. Uh, sometimes it's eight o'clock, sometimes eight to five, like most parents rushing, you know, <laughs> around, very busy. But this year, one of the growth plans is to get out to school. So we know, we know, like Ben Franklin said, early to bed, early to rise, make, <laughs> and I'm a reminder, get, you have to get to bed early, you know, because make you wealthy, wise. And then, you know, you, you wake up in the morning, you're full of a lot of energy. And I know a lot of people don't do that. So that's one of, one of my sort of, Good plan. It's not a goal. The difference between a goal and a growth plan is that the goal is that you're looking at the journey. Oh, so maybe at the end of this time, if I achieve that goal, I'm going to stop and follow the wide. And that, that's what most people do. But for me, the growth plan is not only to get out of school by 745, but to spend time, mindful moment with her. She tells me about worries. We have a good conversation. So that we listen, we learn together. She asks me good questions. You see what I mean? So it's a, it's a good plan. And I'm hoping that would be a lifelong journey for us, even when she's 18, when she's in college, when she becomes a professor. Hopefully, I'm still around. Mm. I can still have that conversation as a dad. So it's a good plan for me. So that's an example. And as I alluded to a few minutes ago about having that bucket of life. So the other thing is about my fitness. You probably know I'm a physician in the field of wellness. So I know I've got a growth plan. So I don't have a goal that I want to go and run a marathon. A lot of people will say, oh, this year I want to ride a 5K, that's great, awesome. Some people will say they, they want to run a marathon, that's awesome, but I don't have that kind of plan. As part of somebody who's in, invested in or interested in wellness and longevity, I want to see when I'm 70, I want to be able to do what I'm, I'm able to do now or much more. If that makes yeah. sense. So, for example, hopefully, if I have my grandkids, I want to be able to run around with them, not to yeah. be in a wheelchair. <laughs> I mm -hmm. want to be able to spend more time with them and be in good vitality. If that explains yeah. that. So, why I said if you don't have a beginner mindset, you would struggle. 
Because someone with beginner mindset, you'll be able to focus all the laws, you know, either Carol's Dweck's book, either James Clare's book, either the Atomic Habit. I mean, there are a thousand of books on habits or growth plan if you, if you Google that or go to the nearest workshop. But what I've found that is if you have a growth in, in a beginner's mindset, hmm, you'll be able to say, okay, I'm going to leave all the things, my successes I achieved in 2022. And you're going to set for hopefully a bigger plan in 2023. But the question really is, I ask myself and people have asked me that, I know, how can I grow when I, I don't know myself? Most people, they leave, they, they leave, and it's not your fault, they are well-intentioned people, it's just because they lack an awareness. Imagine you spend the whole seven days, now I think today is 11. I'm sure most people out there can't even tell me what they what I'm sure 50% of people can't tell me what they've achieved in, in, in the last week. Again, no, no disrespect to anyone listening to this. I think even for me until now, I will just, you know, <laughs> I will just living life in the motion. So you have to know that first. You have to be in the moment to capture those experiences. And that informs you, your growth plan. And if you're not achieving that, so for example, after the end of this month, I'm going to pause and reflect. I'm going to look at the growth plan. Am I taking my daughter to school by 745? Okay, great. So what can I do? Maybe, oh, Am I having dates with her? You know, people find it quite weird for my culture. You know, you're having a date with your daughter, but I try to schedule that into my good plan. I need to have a date one-to-one -one with her, 30 minutes every day. Let me take that to the nearest Starbucks or to a bookshop or a library. I will spend quite you know, quality time. As well as my son too, you know, I have a good plan for that really. So if you, if you don't have, if, if, you're not, if you're not aware, you're not in the moment, you'll be surprised that most people uh, by the end, by, by December, they so whoa, where did this year? <laughs> yeah. you're, you're not intentional. You're not aware of the moment. You don't know what's going on. And I was listening to a philosopher the other day. So it's like, it's like if somebody has woken you up you from sleep, you know, like I, I was like that before, before I turned the John Maxwell team or into, into a good environment. I was like sleeping, you know? metaphorically <laughs> you know but then when somebody woke you up then it, it jumps in you that you need to be intentional you need to be aware you need to have a plan for your life which is i call it good plan goals are wonderful mm -hmm. but i think good plan is that you're just you're not focusing on the on the journey itself you are enjoying the process mm -hmm. both the good the bad the ugly. i mean we are human beings yeah we make mistakes certainly because we are flawed human beings but as long as you're looking at that, okay, whoa. So last year for me, some of my family members or friends said, oh, you don't want to associate with us. You, you are so busy, man. And I said, okay, yeah, maybe and this year, communities, friends, and family is one of my work plan. Maybe mm -hmm. a phone call every other time to talk to them. You see what I mean? That yeah. will improve our relationship. So, but imagine if you don't, you're not aware of what's going on. You're just living life in emotion. Yeah. And you're just asleep until. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I like that. I like that um, growth plan. I like the way you really explained that um, about growth plan. And I believe we should all have growth plan. And you mentioned the fact that you spend time with family. Family is very, very important. So if you're thinking of having a growth plan, you want to really focus on certain areas that are very, very important. Uh, you're talking yeah. about health. You know, uh, you know, you talk about spending time with the with your children. I think it's very, very important. I, I'm sure all of us are going to be learning from you to be intentional about that, to really spend time with our kids. Um, somebody said that the the best thing you can give to your kids um, is time. You know, it's mm. not really, it's not really, you know, a presence. It's your own presence. It's not the gifts you give to them. It's not those presents. Is your presence, your presence. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Time, yeah, I, I agree. You know, and, and I think it's very, very important for us to really have a, a plan for that. Uh, and you also talked about the importance of really enjoying the moment, enjoying the process, uh, not, only, uh, not only focusing on the end result. Mm. Um, you know, you really enjoying the process and asking yourself whether you've been able to achieve what you set out to 
to achieve. It's very, very important. Yeah, I really like, I'm also going to be intentional about that, about really having a growth plan. And um, I know you're a psychiatrist that, you know, I've been wanting to speak to you about mental health, you know, um, is really something that we must keep talking about. Uh, mm. All people don't really, uh, they are not really intentional about building their mental, imp- improving their mental health. As we begin this year, we really need to talk about mental health. So can you really talk to us about how we can improve our mental health and also build resilience for 2023? You know, and this is the right time to talk about that. The first, is it the first or second week of January? Um, I just want you to speak to that. Thank you. Oh, thanks for that. Uh, very good question. I'm not sure I'm the, the best person to address is that a lot of professors and adverts come from, and I, I learned from those people. Uh, where I finished from at the most, this is a great institution. But, right, you know, that's what I was talking about, having a beginner mindset. And if you have that beginner mindset, and you live in a moment, you will start questioning your assumptions and traditions, even the way you've been trained. <laughs> and I'm back in, in Ife, where, where I was trained, or probably back at the mall sleep. Again, I work with fantastic people, great you know, colleagues and all that. But then, right, people thought the world was flat for many years until some, <laughs> some people challenged their assumptions. And, and that's the purpose of science, you know? We need to challenge these assumptions. It takes courage to do that. I'm a student of history. I, I won't go into that topic. We could talk about that all day today, about the interesting, uh, about, about, about history itself as it pertains to science, you know, psychiatry, mental health, or medicine itself. But I, won't, I, I don't want to go into that. What I want to talk about is well-being. That's what I'm, I'm, fo- I, I'm focusing on at the moment. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's great. I have my colleagues that are more traditional psychiatrists. We talk most days. And they talk about their patient, and I smile and all that stuff. They're doing a great job. But I see things so sort of differently. I see it from a different angle. And it's try to address what you talk about, one's mental well-being. I'm sure if you go on LinkedIn today or you go on, on social media, a lot of people are talking about uh, well-being, but there's this phrase I learned from John. He said, "You cannot give what you don't have." A lot of people say one thing, you know, they're doing something else. Okay, so I think we should talk about well-being first. Well, not about what are the ways you know we can we can optimize our strategy and tactics that we can use to improve uh, those things. So I'm sure your audience might want to know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any anxiety. I don't have any any worries. You know, why should I address my mental health? Or, I mean, my physical health is great. It's okay. Maybe not optimal. It's okay. You know, I, I, I'm active and all that. My GP told me I don't have any. I don't have blood pressure. I don't have diabetes. I don't have asthma. And why should I invest? You know, in my health. So I'll be talking from the lens of the mind-body connection, okay? And how people can achieve that optimal health, not the normal traditional health that most hospitals are pushing to us, okay? <laughs> right, so for example, the way I look at things is like, we're human beings, okay? We're gonna have storms in life, right? We're gonna have different experiences. Even in, in 2023, it's gonna be fun, I mean, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So a wise man would start planning ahead, okay? And if you look at it, if you look at my awareness, uh, yes, your spirituality. So for example, this morning, I think I woke up, I don't know why, I woke up around sort of three, four, but surely I have a castle. Maybe it's the anxiety of this interview. What did I do? I couldn't go to bed. I took my mat out, my medicinal mat, and I sat there for almost 20 minutes meditating. Then I went back to sleep, okay? Hmm? So what I'm doing is I'm building my spirituality resilience, okay? So before this meeting, I went for a quick jog around the neighborhood, you know, met people, said I had all that stuff. So what am I doing? I mean, I, I, I think I'm in, in, in a good health, if not optimal. 
but I'm building my fitness edge. So in terms of my relationship, okay, I spent some time with my daughter and son this morning, you know, spending time reading books and all that, you know, and build our relationship, okay. Before, they are my, my son and daughter, actually they corrected me, they said, oh, I said, oh, they're young children. They said, no, they said they are chewing. They keep correcting me, they ask me questions. So they say they are chewing. So I know that time moves slowly, but it passes quickly. So I know before I, before I know it, before I, before I know it, they will become 16, 18, and they are gone to wherever, Stanford, Harvard, whatever. And I will miss that relationship. So what am I doing now? I'm building that relationship with them. Those 15 minutes without interruption, some family members or friends think, you know, they can't get you over the phone or whatever. Of course, that'd be a great community, but I, I spend those times in that area. So what I'm doing is I'm building that resilience. So my finances as well. Okay, my wife's an accountant. She's a great woman. Every, every month, we do what we call a stress test in our finances. I'm, I'm sure the banks do all that. <laughs> People say, why would you do a stress test? Imagine if I lost my job for a whole year. Imagine now I'm an entrepreneur myself, you know. But it was because I've been intentional for the past few years. You know, I've got some. I'm not Elon Musk. I'm not Bill Gates, but I think I'm in a good place. You see what I mean? And mm -hmm. we know that finances or financial stress is one of the most as important stressors in North America. We know that. So imagine if somebody starting this year, they're not putting their, fi their finances in, in, in a good shape. You know, some time will come in life. Are you prepared? If you were laid off your job in this very changing world in the next six months, what would you do differently? You see what I mean? Yeah. The other thing is about growth plan. Okay, I'm, I'm a big fan of Bill Gates. You know, I'm a big fan of all these top guys. He always read. I mean, we, should, we I think we have the band around this. You know, she reads about maybe 12, 12 books or 52 books Bill Gates read every, every year. I'm sure he reads more than that. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't read a big book every month. You know, I, I'm trying my best. Maybe a book, you know, depending on, on the volume of the mm -hmm. book. But I try to read as much as I can. But imagine if you read, again, I'm a person of faith, but I'm not a religious person. I mean, I read a lot of philosophy texts, stoic stuff, you know, or, you know, just gleaning wisdom. John said the other day, so the best way to know the road ahead is to ask people that are coming back from the road. But I see most people don't read, you know. Again, it's not a shame. I've been in that, I've been in that mindset before. Imagine spending time with great philosophers, great thinkers, people who have, who have lived life many years ago, thousands of years ago, hmm? by just being intentional and spending that time. That might save you their wisdom might save you some crisis down the line of 2023. But if you're not intentional about, okay, I'm going to say, okay, this month, I'm going to start reading one book. <laughs> a day, sorry, not a day, sorry. Uh, I mean a month for most people. I, mean, I know some people out there, they can read it. Some people can read. Like, I think Warren Buffett probably reads like 500 pages or more a day. That's guys, a genius. I wish I had that skill. People are surprised. How did they become a billionaire? You know, it's about reading doing a mental gymnastic, being sharp. And the ability, I remember not too long ago, I posted somewhere in one of my uh, WhatsApp group, I posted a couple of books and somebody said, people that read, they see ahead. It's not surprised that these guys, they're great investors, they can see things coming, but most of us are asleep. So it's about having those, you know, addressing those buckets of life, okay? Maybe your businesses, okay, attending conferences, like for me, sleep is very important. I mean, if yeah. you met me a few years ago, I probably would sleep. <laughs> I think I, I think I'm sleeping when I'll sleep. Like I think I have like two. I think they call it five. I mean, somebody have to fact check that. But some people can do with four, six hours, but not me. You know, I've been there before when I'm on calls and all that. But now I have a non-negotiable seven to eight hour sleep. My wife knows that. Once it's about 10 o'clock, the, the, the kid, my kid, my, my children now knows that they are ready for bed by nine. I mean, they get to bed by eight, they read and all the stuff. But it's essential, as I'm the leader in the house, <laughs> I set that tone. By the time I go to bed around nine, they have to be in bed. I mean, they can choose to read and do whatever they want to do. That's, you know, they're learning. I give them that opportunity to learn, but I ensure that the house is quiet, okay? And when they wake up around six o'clock, they're ready to go. People are surprised. How are, to, how are your kids being active and being able to read their precious readers? It's because they sleep well. You know, if you sleep well, you know, 
the, the other thing I want to mention that is about sleep is just the most important thing. I, would, I think people have argued that, that sleep is probably one of the most important thing, you know, with mental resilience or physical resilience. But I find it interesting that most people don't prioritize the sleep. Again, as a doctor, when I did my undergraduate, I can't remember, maybe, maybe, maybe they, they had a lecture and I, I failed to attend. Even at the monthly, I had a one hour lecture. I think at the maximum two hours of lecture on sleep. Imagine that a doctor, a top psychiatrist, have two hours lecture on sleep. And if you look at all the DSM-5 you know, disorders, they, the common thing to them is sleep. Again, I'm not, I'm not suggesting here that sleep causes severe mental illness, but what I'm saying is that sleep, if you're not having the right, the right amount of sleep, not just the amount, but the quality of sleep, then you're going to be having some, <laughs> some interesting uh, uh, and exciting time this year. So, so if you look at all those buckets of life, you, if you can start uh, putting money in the bank, so to speak, okay, my spiritual health, okay, I'm, I'm able like, sometimes I'm not able to do five minutes meditation, but as I'm here now, my phone is switched off, it's somewhere else, so I'm here in the morning, hopefully. Hmm? According to literature, I think, is it Dal Dalai Lama is the most person, is a person that, that, that spend more time in meditation. Okay, again, we need to fact check that. Yeah, I think he's spent about four to six hours, you know, in sort of solitude meditation. I don't do that. I can do that. But what I tend to do is I, I try to be in the moment. So what I'm doing is I'm putting money in the bank for my mental health so that when I'm exposed to stresses, that is in, inevitable in this 24 century life, really, in a fast paced life. So you're going to be exposed to stressors. So a wise person would be preparing for those things. And I think a couple of other things. So I was speaking to my wife about this. She's also very interested in stuff. She gave me an acronym, I think it's mentioned. I asked her, how would you uh, build your resilience? Because I'm, I'm always learning from people. You know, everybody I meet is superior to me in some way. She said, oh, she used this acronym called uh, NEST. So N is said is for your nutrition. So your diet, it doesn't matter really if you're, you're vegan, you're you uh, it doesn't matter if you're a vegan either your Mediterranean diet I mean I know there are a lot of studies on that my role is not to go into that because uh, it could be quite confusing and misleading but it's to ensure that with, with whichever diet you pick you'll be able to eat mindfully and also be able to ensure you're getting the right balanced diet I mean you can always speak to your doctor about that I'm not a doctor and she is he mentioned the E is for exercise also, and, and she does. I mean, she does great exercise. You know, she, she challenges me. Go for our walks every morning, and then does a, a gym stop. As I said, N is for nutrition. E is for exercise. She told me what's the best exercise for anyone to do is the one one enjoys and one can do. Then the S is for stress management. I can talk about sleep, relaxation, yeah. meditation, whatever. I read in books. You write. Yeah. We got tons of books around there. You know including our sacred uh, literatures. And I think the most important thing which I, I wasn't focusing on was the, was the, was the T, sorry, was the, yeah, was the, was the T. You talk about a strong support network. Mm, 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 yeah, perfect, perfect. I, I really like how you really explain it. You, instead of really talking about uh, mental health uh, or, or really calling it mental health, we should really focus on well-being. And uh, talking about um, uh, different aspects of our well-being, uh, financial aspect. That if any of those aspects, if there's a problem mm -hmm. with any of those aspects, is really going to affect our well-being. Um, there must be a plan for that. Uh, you also mentioned the case of our spiritual well-being, and another thing that you also mentioned is the importance of mm -hmm. having. Uh, family time because it's also if, if there's a problem with your family if there's no um there's a disagreement if there's rivalry in the family if there's no love in the family it's going to affect your well-being so mm -hmm. and you also mentioned the case of sleep so you discover that there are different things we really need to put together 
when we're talking about well-being. And we have to be intentional. We have to have a plan. And um, you can also see that all the things we've been talking about are so important. They are, they are interwoven. Uh, growth plan. You want to have a plan for your well-being. Uh, because if you don't have a plan for your well-being, somebody says, uh, if you don't have a plan, you are planning to fail. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well-being is very, very important, like you, you, like you, like you put it. And you also mentioned the case of sleeping very well. I think that was the time they said that um, if you want to have, if you want to live well, uh, you should sleep maybe is it seven hours, um, at least seven hours. So sorry to. In, in, oh, you also like, talked. You also mentioned the quality. You also mentioned. Yeah, the I quality. think it's about different people who do different things. You know, yeah. based on their awareness, their genes. I mean, we, we, we don't want to go into the abstract stuff. Let's yeah. do that to that professors at uh, at our <laughs> Stanford. We want to give people practical things they can do. Yeah. Okay. That's what we are giving people, not yeah. as the type of stuff that is going to change. As you know, you're a professor anyway. Maybe at, at, at every <laughs> week or every month, you know, tons of publication that that nature journals will release about. Yeah. You know? And it, it, it keeps evolving. But what we do know, I mean. Mm -hmm. These are no rocket science. If you study history, mm. you know, mm. you can learn a lot of wisdom about it. Yeah, right. So it's about practical things. You have to know what works best for you. Some people, yeah. they do great on six hours of coffee. Awesome. Mm. But mm. as they are tracking their sleep and they are looking at that, okay, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and they were talking, maybe in the last quarter, let's say for quarter one, I I'm on six, six, okay, I had six hours sleep. Look at your decision making. There are a lot of signs that show that you could correlate your your sleep quality is directly proportional to your decision making. Look at your, I keep decision journal as an entrepreneur. So I, I look at my decision, oh, what did I do? You know, the, 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 the highs and lows. You can see that, you can, you can figure that things out yourself. And if you need a coach, great, you get one. So that's where awareness comes in. Okay. Yeah. For example, yeah. if you think you're sleeping six hours, you think you're superhuman, uh, you know, you're, you have a chain and all this stuff, but then you're not really, writing is okay when i stay for six hours look at the quality of your relation with your, with your, your wife with your, with your kids if even if you have one <laughs> and with your co-workers and also with even your decision making look at it they say yeah. doctors are the worst patients you know again I, I need to be careful what i talk about my colleagues but i know myself you know i'm a doctor and what by what in the worst patient that's why i need to really Put a, a system in place like this, uh, the wellness, like I said, and um, did a different system out there. Again, this is just more of a system. We'll put it in, in, in the show notes. People can yeah. look, you can look at yourself, okay, I, I slept six hours in January. Okay, look at yeah. the quality of your life. And then yeah. maybe in Q2, you're going to look at yeah. that. Maybe I'm going to have another extra hour of sleep and see, oh, I'm feeling much better. I'm not shouting more when, when I'm in traffic, when that guy crossed around me. I'm able to make a better decision in terms of my finances, you know, but a lot of people just are slaves, so to speak. You see what I mean? Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I, I got you there, yeah. Uh, so, so, so it's important for us to look at all those aspects that you, what I was trying to emphasize, you know, and mm -hmm. also you mentioned, yeah, the acronym by your wife, you know, nutrition is very, very important. Somebody said, um, one app a day will keep you from the doctor, you know? I'm sure you've had that, uh, that um, phrase before. So, so it's very, very important for us to think about that as we go into the new year. Uh, and we, we must also uh, be tough, we must be tough, mm. you know? Uh, somebody said, I think Robert Shula, tough time never lasts, but tough people do. It must be, there are things that are gonna come um, across you that's gonna be, there are challenges that will come across you, but you, you've got to encourage yourself. I am a person of faith. I believe in Christ. You want, you know, uh, personally, I want to encourage myself in the word of God. I, I try to read the Bible. I, start, I try to pray because I believe there is a, a, enormous power that, um, that is available to us in, in God. So, so you mm -hmm. need all the things to really uh, be resilient in this in this world uh, you know I, I really appreciate you know how you were able to tell stories it's good to tell stories a lot and and that's what you've been able to do uh you know during our conversation so far telling stories people learn a lot of stories uh mm. so uh 
we are now just before you can i just interject for a second yeah. so I'm, I'm gonna show you so there's this thing i i wear not all the time so mm. i've got my okay. so i've got my glucose i'm not mm. sure okay. it's on the screen no it's not showing okay the glue okay okay yeah i can see it so okay seven something yeah yeah mm. yeah sorry yeah Okay, I think I it's about seven. It's, seven so, yeah. Until I started following people in the field of longevity and all that, I wasn't aware of these things, you know. I mean, some expert out there, they, they wear this glucose monitoring 24 7. I don't do that. Mm. But I kind of wear it during Christmas time when there's a lot of food at home, you know, yeah. a lot mm. of stuff in my pantry. Mm. So I try mm. to wear that. And also in the new year, I'm looking at my glucose. I'll say I was feeling a bit funny the other day. I mean, after post Christmas, you know, mm. <laughs> I feel it a bit foggy and all that. Imagine that some people might talk, so, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling anxious and all that. But, but then I got one of those, you know, last month. Again, mm. I'm, not make, I'm not doing any advert for anyone. There are different brands out there. You can speak to your GP. But this one helps me to know that, to know what we call the cause and effect, that you are what you eat. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, for example, this morning, I've only had some, you know, some nuts and grains and all that, maybe a cup of coffee and also, you know, but I can see my glucose, you know, I know what, what is right for the game. I'm not your audience doctor, you have to discuss that, you know, to it with your GEP. But imagine if you, if you had this one for maybe for just for, for 14 days, it raises your awareness. Okay. Mm. So when you see your, your blood sugar <laughs> shoots up to like 14, you need to be asking yourself, what am I eating? Have I gone for that exercise this morning? Hmm? Hmm. The point of your relationship. But most of us, we, 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 we're not aware of all these things until, God forbid, uh, somebody you know, either collapse somewhere hmm. and then hmm. they watch you to your GP, or maybe you go for a random, I'm sure most people will be going to the GP, okay, oh, MOT test, this is the first year, I'm going to look at my, I'm sure people will see the GP. And the GP is, put that strap on you and say, oh, you have high blood pressure, 170 um, over maybe 110 or whatever, really. And we know all these things, they are silence killer. You, you can't spot them until you start, you start becoming symptomatic, particularly for people like us, oh, Black mm -hmm. Africans, you know, Black um, Canadians, Black Americans and all this stuff. But if you're aware of your cause and effect, what, for example, <laughs> your stress level, your stress management, you exercise, you sleep, then you, you can you know you can see for yourself the cause and effect. You see what I mean? Yeah. So for example, I have a growth plan with regards to that. So I just only wear it for maybe for the first month, just to see, okay. I was telling my wife that I said, okay, I, I probably have to be, you know, she's a great cook, but you know, she's different than, than myself. There's no shame in that. But yeah, but sometimes I want to. Like last year, I was an only on carbohydrate diet, but this year I want to spice things up. I want to make more flexible so I can eat with her and stop. Okay. So every, everyone has to figure that out. But the, mm -hmm. the, the problem with the, with the traditional uh, medicine or traditional healthcare is that it's, it's it, I think the doctors are fantastic and they are well intentioned, but it's just that they lack the awareness. Or the second, the second thing is that I have learned from my experience is that. Medicine, the way we practice it, is a disease model. Okay, nobody mm. would, the government won't pay me for me, you know, my GP won't pay me for doing this, keeping out of it. You see what I mean? Mm. But the, the government will pay, I'm sure, my GP for patients that, that are more disease, that are chronic illness. You see what I mean? Again, there's no shame in that. We're, we're part of a bigger community. We're here to support ourselves. But what I'm always preaching is that we need to have a growth plan with regards to all the bucket aspect of our life. And imagine if, if I have a, an optimal glucose, I think clearly, right? <laughs> I make better decisions. My glucose is not fluctuating. You know, I'm not feeling like, oh, you know, what's going on? I'm not really screaming at my wife. You know, again, I'm not saying I don't have conflict with my wife. I'm human, you know, I make mistakes and all that. But what I'm saying really is if you, if you have a system in place, right? You're able to, and you are aware of what's going on in your body. You are aware of what's going on in your mind, but most people are not. Then you can figure that out. You can take your GP. Okay, oh, 
I've been having it for the last two weeks. And if you have the wellness edge that I, I alluded to for the, for the fact a few minutes ago, then you can look at that. Okay, in the month of January, my glucose was all over the place. Then just look at that. Okay, oh, maybe these are the meetings. Maybe it's my job. Maybe I'm working with Maybe it's family issues. Maybe I need to set more healthy boundary with family and colleagues. Maybe I'm not having fun in my job, you know. Maybe it's just a posture, you know. A lot of people are, I mean, you can see me, I'm standing, obviously, for some reason, for, for, for a good reason. Maybe it's just sitting down all day. You see what I mean? But then if you're not aware of all this, until then, you go to your GP, maybe at the end of the year, oh, I said, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Smith. You, are, you have type 2 diabetes. You see what I mean? And the wise man says prevention is better than care. Yeah. Right? Hmm, 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 hmm. Profound. Uh, that is very deep. That is very deep. Um, and you, you've also been telling us about traditional medicine, you know, is really looking for... Uh, they, they try to treat the disease, and now you you really want us to begin to think about how to prevent, and we can prevent it by our lifestyle. We can prevent it by what we eat. We, we can prevent it by having good well being, and it mm -hmm. takes hard work. It takes hard work, <laughs> and, <laughs> but that is why it is. Hard remember, work. This, remember the saying. Yeah. I'm not sure it was yeah. Jim Rohn or I don't know who said. He said if it's easy. <laughs> Yeah. Would do it. yeah. <laughs> so, it is, so sometimes it is, some people yeah. would need a very good doctor who is invested in, in prevention of health. Most doctors mm -hmm. are not. There's no shame mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. Or you perhaps need a coach to help yeah. you ask those mm -hmm. uh, interesting yeah. questions. Somebody that it might just be a, a group, a network of group of people you know that want to get better. Uh, like I, I was. Saying at the outset of this meeting, I'm running the 15 laws of invaluable God my, um, mm. program. Again, it's specifically about mindset. But then, once you start joining the community of people who are going somewhere, who, are, who has a good plan, who can have, yeah. who can be online maybe every hour, I mean, for one hour every week for four to six weeks, and they start seeing that significant improvement in their lifestyles and their well being, I'm sure they'll start investing in their mindset, their growth mindset i suppose and also in your well-being yeah yeah I, I i do agree with that yeah and now we've been talking for more than a more than one hour and now i think we really need to wrap it up uh so what's your closing remark for us today interesting question so you know what i did i always try to ask questions to ask my wife we had a bit of chat around this and i asked her what am i missing that's a beginner mindset question. A lot of people don't ask that. People don't, mm. people don't ask that because they think, oh, they've arrived, they know it's all. I say, what am I missing? So my wife said to me, wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> so when she said that, I know, wow, that I'm a work in progress. And wisdom, I, was, I did a lot of research on this. I'm sure people have access to Google, they can do that. It's something philosophers, doctors, lawyers, you know, historians, people, people humans, they, they, they grapple with over the last, maybe not last few years, I think, or since creation of the world. So, what is wisdom? I'm sure there are a lot of smart people out there, very super smart people out there that are able to do justice, you know, speak more even eloquently than me on this topic. But then um, if you go on social media, you, you will know that uh, wisdom is not common these days. So there's a difference between being super smart and having wisdom. Absolutely. Hmm. So hmm. one of the things I tell people really is in terms of if you're going to try to Maybe get a doctor or uh, get a coach or get a mentor. It's always looking at a person and asking the person, yeah, he's got his experience, but does this person ask wisdom? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that would be a, an important factor. Mm -hmm. So what I would suggest as my closing remark is, is to encourage our audience to try to 
maybe just spend a bit of time, you know, wrestling with that question about wisdom. Mm. Because the mm. quality of our lives is based on the decision we make, right? So, and if you don't have wisdom, then you'll be making a lot of interesting, you know, uh, decisions. So, for example, I was in preparation for this, for this uh, podcast or this interview, I was listening to this guy, I think it's from the professor in Stanford, and I just said, most people don't have the time to meditate, right? <laughs> we are busy. Most people don't have this time. We're just really uh, in a very busy world. So he just said, maybe you're just taking a, a free breath a day before you make major decisions, okay? Okay, sometimes you just have to sleep over things. Maybe speak to a, your wife or a very supportive in the network before making decisions. But we, we do know that's not the norm in a society. Even if you, if you look at our, our leaders who are, I'm, I'm not gonna make any, any specific you know, comments about that, but we know that wisdom is rare in this world. Mm-hmm. We're a lot of super smart people out there, but wisdom is rare. So that would be my, and that's one of the words for me this year is to try to be a better person. Okay? Yeah. To be a wise, again, I'm not, I remember somebody told me, if you think you're wise, then it's likely, it's likely that you're not, you're not a wise person. So I'm not really uh, in that category. And a lot of wise people yeah. like the Maxwell, like, you know, yeah. top people out there who are wiser than me. I'm trying to learn from people I meet. I'm trying to learn from others. So maybe if people think about uh, the word wisdom this year. Maybe that will change their mindset. They think about it because if you're a wise person, you, you will make better, better, better decisions in relation to all aspects of your life your sleep, your relationship, your spirituality, yeah. everything. And it, if you're making, we know that habit, ab, habits can compound. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Is that what, who said that? It was the Einstein, or it was the world Warren Buffett, that is the most powerful force in our is compound interest. So imagine if you're a wise person, over time it compounds. So you start making better decisions in relation to yourself, your well-being, your mental health, well-being, yeah. your financial well-being, mm. and also your mm. family as well. And imagine if people can really do this one thing today. Hopefully, this uh, interview impacts somebody out there. Imagine if you can do that, and that spread like white fire mm. the world. Do you know what that means? Yeah. That means I'm going to live in a lovely neighborhood, you know, where we make wise decisions, Okay. Yeah, we live yeah. In, a, in, in, in a wise community where we don't have to spend money on crimes, we don't have to spend all the budgets on all these things on the health care, but we can spend money on what matters. Building the country up, innovating, you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And preparing yeah. for the future rather than spending a big chunk of our GDP on things that don't yeah. really matter. I think, thank you so much for your question. My wisdom is very, very important, you know. Even the Holy Scripture says wisdom is a principal thing. It's mm. so important. Wisdom is a principal thing. And I believe that wisdom is the application of knowledge. You know, people have knowledge. Mm. Smart, people, smart people have knowledge, but mm. they are not able to apply the knowledge that they have. A lot of people know that there are certain things you shouldn't do, but they still do it. Somebody Why is that? Was, yeah, Why because they don't have because yeah. they don't have wisdom. Like you said, somebody said, uh, uh, one pastor, one pastor of a church, I you know, I, I, I've been attending in the US, you know, mm-hmm. said that you know you, you, you have a cardiologist that just mm-hmm. did maybe operation for someone, and mm-hmm. this man knows that it's wrong for him to smoke. No, mm-hmm. this guy knows that smoking can affect his lungs, but yeah. this guy who still go and smoke. You understand? So, 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 so the, the, the man knows it, but he, he can't help himself. So the wisdom is not there. The guy is smart, but the wisdom mm. is not. So we, so we need more wisdom. So all of us, we need more wisdom. And, uh, we, and, and that's one of the prayers that we, I'm going to pray this year, that God increase my wisdom so that I'll, when I know the right thing to do, I should do it. That is wisdom. Uh, you know, I really Can like I just your... Add to this, just a, 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 so during my yeah. summer research, I just... Mm-hmm. There's this guy, again, I'm sure people can Google this anyway. I mean, you can... <laughs> you know, we have information at the touch of the button. 
So I'm just going to share this as regards to wisdom. So this, I mean, again, this has been an essential question people have asked over the years. So they said, they say there's Bates and colleagues, you know, they factored and analyzed a lot of results, hundreds of results, you know, and they came out with things they felt, you know, because I know a lot of people like facts, like science, and the amount of science and faith as well, but most of, maybe some of our audience, they're not people of faith and they, they want science, obviously. So you now said these are the factors, and I think I agree with most of the things you said. You said, one, you have to have factual knowledge. Not just knowledge, factual knowledge. Like you were saying, the cardiology story. Two, you have to have procedural knowledge. Three, you have to have what we call a lifespan contextualization. It's very difficult for people to do that. Imagine a, a cardiologist that will see somebody for five, 10 minutes. It's hard to be honest. In. Then four is value relativism. Ability to see things from all angles. It's very hard. Mm. If you're not growing, you don't, you don't have a good mindset. How can you talk to your patient about smoking, mindfulness, exercise, nutrition? You see? And the last number the least said is awareness and management of uncertain uncertainty. And that's where it comes in you know, your awareness. Mm-hmm. And most mm-hmm. of us we're not aware. <laughs> right. So I think it, it's uh, it's interesting. Even for me, it's something that I need to post somewhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. My little place here where I'm going to be looking at it every day as I'm hoping to be a better person, a better human being, a father, a husband. And hopefully a doctor, a physician, and an, an entrepreneur uh, this year. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Larry D. Uh, Larry D, you're my very good friend, uh, for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this interview with me, uh, this recording with me. I really learned a lot uh, from our discussion, my con- conversation this uh, afternoon, and I am sure our viewers have also learned to do things from our uh, discussion. Uh, thanks for sharing a lot of stories. Thanks for challenging us uh, about uh, self reflection, challenging us about having a group plan, uh, challenging us about well being. And also, uh, one thing I really appreciate about you is really now spending more time with your kids, which is very, very important. Um, and I'm sure, you know, traditional African parents, uh, you know, wh- while we're growing up, you know, they were not taught about that, about the importance of that. But now we really need to really, you know, prioritize that to spend time with our kids um, so that they can also become good uh, parents. Uh, hmm. A lot of pro- problems we have in the world is because of absent, uh, absentee fathers, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 um, kudos to uh, to uh, to moms that uh, that their husbands are not there, or maybe they lost their husbands. Uh, they are really doing a great job, but um, we need father figures at home to really raise kids. And even if uh, you know children don't have pa- uh, fathers, they can also have mentors, maybe from the church to really mm-hmm. you know be father figures. We 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 really need to do that. Thanks for really you know uh, from our discussion, from what you've been saying, uh, you know, trying to indirectly telling us about the importance of you know spending time with our kids is very very vital. I just want to thank you for for our discussion. I really learned a lot, and to our viewers. I want, I want to hear from you what you've learned from our discussion today. Uh, let me know, put it in the comments. So see you some other time. Uh, once again, I want to wish you a wonderful year ahead. Uh, stay blessed.